Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. This month we have a theme of castle and I decided to make a birthday card using the castle pop-up as a sand castle. And I will be incorporating a few other dies from my collection and you can check out all of my designs at karenberniston.com. The first thing I'll work on is the sand castle itself. So I'll basically use craft cardstock for everything. A little bit darker craft cardstock for the castle itself and the two foot towers. And then for all of the decorator pieces, I am using a lighter craft cardstock that has double-sided adhesive on the back of it. That way when I die cut those, all of those little embossed features will be a little bit raised. And then I'm also going to highlight them with a ink. So I am using Crumb Cake by Stampin' Up because it just seemed like a good sand type of color. And then since all of those pieces are stickers, I will just add them to the castle. The middle three panels get decorated on the front of the castle, and then the other three panels get decorated on the back of the castle. At the very end of this video, you'll find links to a couple other videos, and one of those videos is the castle assembly video. So if you would like to see all this decorating done at a little bit slower pace where I explain each piece and where it goes, you can watch that video. I'm going to speed through it here on this video because I have a lot more card to teach. But the idea is just to use all the decorator pieces on the castle. Now I can connect the tab for the castle, but I do like to just first work those long folds because I've added the decorator pieces and I want to make sure that the folds go through those as well. And then to connect the castle, there's a little tab and I just need a strong adhesive on that tab. I am using my fine tip bottle filled with Lineco Neutral pH adhesive and we do sell both of those items on our website. I love using glue for my pop-ups. It's very permanent and it doesn't seem to come unstuck, you know, in the humidity that we have here in South Texas, but you are always welcome to use a strong tape if you prefer. Okay, now let's work on the card. I'm starting with a piece of craft cardstock that is four and a half inches by seven and an eighth inch. If you start your scoring from the right side, You'll have an inch and a quarter panel, then you want a four and a half inch panel, then three quarters of an inch panel, and that will leave you your five eighths inch panel on the end. All of those folds will be valley folds. So the little five eighths inch flap folds in and then folds over again, and then you have the flap on the other side. Okay, then I also need a backing card. So that's going to be a piece of the same craft card stock, four and a half inches by five and three quarters, and then I'll score it again at an inch and a quarter from the right hand side. So later on, that will become the backing card that goes behind the main pop up card. The pop up die in the castle set has alignment nubs that you line up right over the fold of the card. And it also has a triangle shaped cutout in the middle of the die that should point towards the front of the card. So I will use my temporary removable tape to hold that die right centered over that fold on my pop up card. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. I am using a Sizzix Big Shot today. So here's what that die does it cuts the little drawbridge. You can see that comes through the little opening, and then it cuts the two tabs that are needed to hold the castle onto the card. Normally I would place the decorator piece just on one side of the drawbridge, but since I am going to see the other side of the drawbridge through the transparency when the card is closed, I'll decorate both sides with the decorator piece. I have an old Stampin' Up! stamp with a bunch of random dots that I'll use with some brown ink to make sand texture all over my card but you could also use just a coarse sponge with that ink or a Brillo pad or a piece of Velcro, just anything that'll create those small flecks. My card is going to have a magnet closure, so I need some strong tape in the outer flap on the inside of the card, and then I can peel that up and stick a very strong magnet into that tape, just centered. And actually, my magnets are so small that I think I'm gonna stack two of them up and I buy those from K&J Magnetics, and I will just put the link in the About section below this video or on the blog post. So I fold that flap over and that traps the magnet in, and then I'm gonna put my other magnet just temporarily. I'm just going to let it sit on those magnets so that I don't lose it. 
Now I can attach my sand castle inside the card by adding my strong glue all over the tab around the little drawbridge opening. That will correspond perfectly to the front of the castle. So it's just a matter of getting that castle onto that tab and then pinching it into place. And it's pretty easy because you've also got the holes that will line up with the holes in the castle. So just basically get it there behind the castle and that will attach it. And then we just need to attach the back tab. So again, glue on the top of the tab, just like that. And then just reach in there and just attach it inside the castle on the back edge. And that back panel is the only one that I didn't already decorate. I kept the decorator piece off of the castle until I attached it inside the card. And that way I can put my decorator piece inside the castle at the end, covering up that tab. So now it's sandwiched between those two layers. You don't see it and the castle decoration looks complete. When I close down the card, the castle will collapse into the flat position. And then when I open it, it will pop up. My concept for this card is that in the closed position, you can see that sand castle, but it's partially obscured because the window itself has real sand in it. If you prefer to just make a clear window, you just need a single piece of transparency, four and a half inches wide, four and a quarter tall. But if you want to be adventurous, try a double pane window so that you can add sand or beads or sequins or something in between those panes. You would need four and a half inches by eight and a half inches on your transparency, scored and folded at four and a quarter. So right along the edge on one half of the transparency, I need my quarter inch tacky tape to go around that perimeter. Since I'm using sand, I decided to add some spray adhesive on the side that has the tape, just so it will kind of hold the sand suspended around the window and it won't just all slide down to the bottom. So I'm just spooning a little sand onto that spray adhesive and then I'll just dump off the excess. And now the goal is to get the liner off the tape and not get sand down into my tacky tape. So I've got to work carefully with this, just making sure I go slowly get those liners off, and then immediately close the card and seal it. I'll stick with my strong tape to add the transparency window to the card, just adding some strips of tape along the bottom, and then just putting that window on that tape so that the fold end is up, and you can see that the tape end is at the bottom, and then just pressing it into that adhesive. So now that the front is on my card, I'm able to transfer the magnet into the right position by just adding some strong glue dots to the magnet that's just sitting there on the other magnets and then closing the flap. And that will transfer that magnet now to the transparency in the right spot for the closure to work. So if I don't want to see that magnet in the finished card, it's not a big deal because I can just cover it using some washi tape and I'll wrap that around the transparency then to cover both sides. Plus that's just going to add a little bit of much needed color to this card. Okay, it's time to put the backing card on. Now generally when you're trying to do a card that opens up fully flat, I don't like to put a full fold in a full fold, but I'm going to try it on this card and see if I can get this thing opening up flat. If not, it probably would be safer just to cut this into two pieces. But I'll use my tape runner around the perimeter and then I can do everywhere on the inch and a quarter flap, but not everywhere on the big one. I need to keep that area at the bottom open where you've got an open hole. Everything else is covered. See, that's covered now with the transparency. Okay, so then I'm just gonna line up the fold and get that backing card on. So I was able to get this card to open up fully flat, even though it does have a fold in a fold, but another option would have been just to go ahead and cut it on the fold. Totally optional, but I thought this card would look cute with some rounded corners, so I'm using a half inch corner chomper. So through the sandy window, you can spy that sand castle in there, and then of course, when the card opens, it pops up. And finally, we just need some decorations. The extra tower that comes with the castle set is optional, but it does look great inside the castle. You just need a strong adhesive on the two feet, and those just straddle the fold, so you can put that anywhere along the fold inside the castle. I'm going to go all the way to the right with the castle open, and then I'll just press on that while I close the card. For decorating, I'll turn to some accessory dies, and I'll start with the tropical scene, which has this great scalloped edge die. 
and the stitches are on both sides of the cut. So one side looks like waves and one side looks like scallops and I can use both of those sides. I'm also going to add some twine to the drawbridge. So for that, I like glue on the ends of the twine. It makes them easier to put through the holes of the drawbridge. And I'll string it now down through the drawbridge and up the other side. And then I'll get that twine through the holes on the front of the castle. I'll add some mini glue dots just to the card underneath the drawbridge, just on the cardstock. And then I can press that drawbridge down and that will help me know exactly how tight to make my twine inside the castle. And for securing the other ends of the twine inside the castle, I'm just using regular tape. I've cut and assembled all of the sea animals to play in my sand castle. The crab is glued to the front of the castle. You can see that through the sandy window. And then I'll add the shark onto the extra tower. And you can kind of see the sparkle to the animals. I used a Wink of Stella pen on all of them after assembling. I assembled two of the sea turtles because it's the perfect choice for extending out over the sandy window. Because that turtle is mirror image, you're able to use it on the front of the transparency and the back of the transparency and it will line up perfectly. Another thing you can do with the scalloped edge die from the tropical scene is to make a cool rickrack out of it. So after cutting one side of the rickrack, you flip the die around and then you just make sure that all the little points are inside the scallops when you line it up. So you're basically offsetting a half a scallop. Then you roll it through your machine again and now you have that perfect rickrack. And I decided the flap of my card needed some more color, so I'm adding some red washi tape to it. And then I'll add that rickrack over the top, sort of half on, half off. And then that will kind of correspond with the piece on the inside as well as make an interesting flap detail. I added the word celebrate from word set two to the front of the card. And then inside the card, I used the birthday charms to add a hat in the crab's hand, a cupcake on the front of the castle, and the shark biting a present. And then behind the castle, the happy birthday word, cut twice and offset. And then for a last little bit of bling, a few rhinestones on the front of the transparency, and wherever I put them on the front of the transparency, I'll just open the card and add them in the same locations inside. And then maybe a few in the sand around happy birthday as well. I love how this card turned out, that hint when the card is closed of the magic inside and then you open it and you've got this great sand castle with this party going on. The card measures four and a half inches square when it's closed, so it will melt easily in an A7 envelope and shouldn't cost any additional postage. With these monthly designer challenge videos, I really invite you just to look at the techniques involved and adapt these cards to other themes you can see that this would be a great castle card using more traditional castle colors, maybe with the knight and the dragon and the princess. You don't have to put sand in your window. You could use confetti, you could use sequins, beads, or just make it a plain clear window. So really have fun with it. I definitely invite you to come up with alternatives. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.